Hey there, I'm Grace, and I'm a GMAT instructor here at Manhattan Prep. By now, you've taken a practice cat, or two, and gone through a top-level review of those exams. Our assessment reports take the same cat data, but give you a different view of your performance. Go ahead and open the cat review tracker from your top-level review, as we're going to be adding more notes to that document. Look at your bucket two on the main page tab. These are the content areas, question types, and timing issues you've already prioritized. Before you get too far along, you want to make sure you're working on the right things and that you haven't missed any big areas to improve. That's where our assessment reports come in. Open up your CAT exam page in Atlas. Under Assessment Reports, select Generate. From this screen, you can run assessment reports for a single CAT or across multiple exams. We'll come back to multiple exam assessment reports, but for now, run assessment reports for just your most recent CAT. I'll walk through this student's assessment reports while you review yours. The first page is an overview. On the top half of the page, you see a summary of your performance in each of the two quant question formats and in each of the three verbal question formats. Don't spend a lot of time on the percent correct column here, as it's difficult to draw any conclusions without knowing exactly which questions those were. The blank column indicates whether you ran out of time in a section. A 1 here for one of the quant problem types means you didn't finish the quant section. A 1 here for one of the verbal problem types means you didn't finish the verbal section. Take a minute to look back at your quant timing notes from your top level review. The student noted that they spent a ton of time on early questions and then ran out of time at the end of the section. This is a very common issue we see in our students. But which questions were they? The assessment reports can help answer this question. The student's average per question time for incorrect answers was higher for problem-solving questions than it was for data sufficiency questions. The student hypothesizes that they are less willing to let go of problem-solving questions and possibly giving up too soon with data sufficiency questions. As you review, record these new observations in your tracker along with what you think those observations might be indicating. Finally, make a note as to how you'll follow up on those observations. The student makes a note to look at the topics tested in the three incorrect problem-solving questions they spent the most time on and the three incorrect data sufficiency questions they spent the least time on and check those topics against what's in their buckets. The overview page doesn't give you any definitive answers about what you need to work on. Instead, your task here is to come up with hypotheses and questions that you'll test and answer as you dig further into the details. Go through this same process with verbal timing. Look back at your notes from your top level review and leverage this different view that the assessment reports and this overview gives you. The student noted they spent a lot of time on a subset of critical reasoning questions, deciding between the two final answers. They were surprised that their critical reasoning per question time wasn't higher. The student hypothesizes that perhaps there are other critical reasoning questions they're rushing through and choosing answers without taking the time to eliminate each wrong choice. They make a note to look at their per question timing for different types of critical reasoning questions. Take the time now to answer the relevant questions in the quant and verbal tabs of your tracker. The bottom half of the overview page summarizes your quant performance by broad content area. Again, percent correct is less useful here without more detail about which questions those were. We'll get there in the section reports. Pay attention here to average per question times and average difficulty levels, looking for anything surprising or worrisome that you want to pursue. The student made a note that their average difficulty level for algebra questions was lower than that for other quant content areas. They want to know, is this performance consistent across all algebra problems? Or was there a subtopic or two pulling them down? The student makes a note to check this in the quant section reports. Go ahead now and answer the relevant questions in the quant and verbal tabs of your tracker. You now have a few lines of inquiry to pursue as we turn to the section reports.